Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video myself, Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to start things off with some very cool news regarding AMD and how they are faring against Intel. And what we actually have is a gain in the market for AMD according to a report from SeekingAlpha.com. And of course you can find a link to their article in the description below this video. So what we have is Morgan Stanley raising its AMD target by $2 to $32. And the reason for this is apparently the company's quote, remarkable position to grow its market share against both Intel and of course Nvidia because while we talk a lot about how well they've been doing against uh, Intel, Nvidia are also definitely on AMD's radar of course and according to the analyst Joseph Moore they're likely to quote gain share in every segment next year while critically reducing that R&D cost. Now, while they have been doing very, very well for themselves with the gaming Ryzen parts, where they have really excelled, of course, is the epic line of processors. I go on and on, as does pretty much everyone on the face of the planet, how important the server market is for both companies. You know, Intel used to have a pretty much near monopoly on that particular market, and AMD have just been clawing away market share from them. And while Intel, are, of course, is still in the lead, you know, they're not exactly happy about losing all the important market share to their direct competitors. So, speaking of AMD and NVIDIA, we actually have some news next from NVIDIA and the GTX 1660 Super. And if a recent leak is to be believed, the specifications for the Super graphics card have been confirmed as they were listed at a Chinese retail outlet, JD.com, which was then helpfully tweeted by Momomo, of course, on Twitter, whose name you should be very familiar with by this point. They have been the source for a lot of key information that has been pretty much on the money. So, as I said, we do see a listing here for the supercards, and according to the specs we see um, on JD.com, we see 1408 CUDA cores, so 14,008, 80 texture mapping units, and 48 of raster operation units. As for the clock speed, however, we do see 1530 MHz base and a 1785 MHz boost, and we would see a significant upgrade on the memory front in the form of GDDR6, which of course is not present on the GTX 1660 vanilla. As for the speed of the memory, it is going to be 14 GBPS dies, and it's going to be 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 on a 192-bit bus for 336 gigabytes a second. Of course, there's still the all-important question of how much this particular graphics card is going to cost. And unfortunately, it would just be speculation at the moment, but of course, the GTX 1660 Vanilla is $229, and the Thai is $249. Um, I could see them still offering the Vanilla, perhaps the Thai, but I think they would have to reduce the price and obviously probably offer the Super for around the price of the original cards, which is kind of what we have seen done in most cases across the Super lineup, but um, we'll have to see what Nvidia decides to do in this particular instance. So, is this legit? The answer is probably yes. If not, this image is extremely convincing, but given the image that we see here and how it lines up with some previous images that we saw. My money is on this being pretty accurate, but of course we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But we have yet more from one of AMD's rivals today, this time being Intel, as we have some information on an i5 Comet Lake CPU. So what we have this time around is a listing for this particular proce processor excuse me, on Sysoft Sandra. And we can see this Comet Lake processor isn't actually listed as an i5, but looking at the specs of what we can see here, it would actually make sense for it to be an i5 as an educated guess. It, but what we do see 100% in black and white at the time of recording is 6 cores and 12 threads. So what's also interesting is that we only see the base clock mentioned, which is currently shown at 2 GHz. So this is most likely an engineering sample and we also see 3 megs of L2 and 12 megs of L3. So again, we can probably expect the specs to change as Intel tweak and work on this particular entry into the Comet Lake line, but what is 
obviously interesting here is the six cores 12 thread so you know, even on the seemingly lower end in this particular case we are still seeing that all important multi-threading being present which obviously lines up with the rumors that we would be seeing of that across the whole of Comet Lake no matter which SKU you ended up purchasing i3, i5, i7 or what have you. So I think the main thing we can take up from this is that Comet Lake is continuing to look very, very interesting um, across pretty much all of the leaks and benchmarks that we've had so far. But we're going to move on from this now to a couple of things from Microsoft, the first of which is regarding the PC. And essentially what we have here is a new security measure that they're planning for the PC called Secured Core PC. So this is aimed to be at the firmware level and Microsoft have basically said that firmware level attacks are pretty damn difficult to tackle as they give hackers deep access to the system and they have been working alongside various companies in order to achieve secured core PC. They've been working with Intel, Qualcomm o and other OEM partners as well as AMD and basically they see a combination of you know OS, hardware, firmware protection and identity to basically try and combat the current vulnerabilities we have in the BIOS and of course the UEFI firmware. So I do have a bit of a statement here from Microsoft himself um, who do detail this in quite a lot of detail in their blog post of course you can find that linked in the description below this video but they do say, quote, using new hardware capabilities from AMD, Intel, and Qualcomm, Windows 10 now implements System Guard Secure Launch as a secured core PC device requirement to protect the boot process from firmware attacks. System Guard uses dynamic root of trust for measurement, or DRTM, capabilities that are built into the latest silicon from AMD, Intel, and Qualcomm to enable the system to leverage firmware to start the hardware and then shortly after reinitialize the system into a trusted state by using the OS bootloader and the processor capabilities to send the system down a well-known and verifiable code path. If you're looking for a pretty damn decent write-up on what this actually means in clearer terms, there is a pretty damn good article on Wired.com, um, so go check that out as they do explain it fairly swiftly and kind of untangle all the techno jargon that, that is currently in Microsoft's blog post. So you can find that link there in the description um, below this video as well as Microsoft's blog post if you feel like reading the source material. But essentially the TLDR is the hardware and the software are going to work together better to help present, um, prevent, sorry should I say, these sorts of attacks from occurring. And Microsoft already utilizes the similar technology on their Xbox consoles, which of course are locked down much tighter than your average PC. So they're basically taking what they've learned from Xbox and applying it this time to the PC platform. Speaking of Xbox, we're actually going to finish things up with the Xbox Scarlet. So, we of course have been talking a lot about what's going on with not only this console, but of course Sony's offering as well. And we have seen comments in the past from Microsoft about how they're going to be pushing for higher frame rates with a particular console, as well of course higher resolutions. But we have some very interesting comments from Aaron Greenberg, who spoke with Xbox Official Magazine. And he basically said that the significant upgrade we see from the Scarlet versus the Xbox One or even the Xbox One X will enable developers to basically not have to worry about making a compromise on frame weights. So he said, quote, but with the next gen, I think you'll see a big upgrade in the CPU because we really want to make sure that you don't have any compromises with the frame rates. Yes, we can do 4K, but we can also do 120 frames per second. So I think that type of capability will be something that people don't see today. So this sounds pretty damn promising, as I'm sure you'll agree. I mean, I've discussed this many times now, how the Xbox One X was great, and I really wish that more companies had done come what we saw with um, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where you could either have you know increased resolution or increased frame rate. But it sounds like, hopefully at least, we'll see that developers not have to make that choice, that they can offer both as best as they can actually get out of the machine, of course, um, to the best capability of their skills as well with the development. Obviously, this is all marketing talk, so do take it with a pinch of salt, but... It's definitely going to be interesting. This is not the first time we have seen comments to this effect that the CPU upgrade is going to be huge for this particular console versus the last generation. 
I think we can all agree though that the next gen consoles are going to be very, very interesting and we'll finally see hopefully 60 FPS become the standard on console because that is the main frustration when playing a console exclusive. I, you know, I've expressed many times my desire to play Bloodborne for instance at a proper frame rate but unless we get a PS5 version that's probably never going to happen. So hopefully we won't see that situation repeated again with the next generation with exclusives that would like, you feel like they would flourish more on the PC platform, but never will, due to them being exclusive to one system or another. But regardless, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.